This article, videos, titled, Buried in Time. I ran again. This is when I, after I finished the Miami Marathon, second time I ran it, and I took a month off, and this is when I wrote it. I ran again for the first time in a month. After finishing my second marathon in late January, my legs needed some time off before I hit the pavement again. I was excited to be running again. Running is fun. Miami is a scenic place and the weather is usually warm. I started running around 7 o'clock a.m. and part of my run went past this large cemetery right in the middle of the city. I looked to my right into the cemetery as I passed it and I saw this long paved road that runs right through the middle of the cemetery. I made a mental note that one day I'm going to take my run through the cemetery right along that road. Now I know some people get spooked out about cemeteries. People don't want to look at them. They don't like to live near them or talk about them. As if the very idea of a cemetery, you know, might speed up their path to dying. It's as if, as you know, what Robert Greene says in The 50th Law, one of my favorite books, people unconsciously believe that if they ignore any thoughts of death, that that'll stave it off from happening. In addition to my run, that day was actually March 9th, the birth date, or the death date rather, of the late, great, notorious B.I.G. And that, in 2019, that was the 22nd anniversary of his death. When he passed, he was only 24 years old, which is crazy to think about. And even if you don't listen to rap music, you know who B.I.G. was. I mean, he was famous, and 22 years after his death, we still celebrate his life with hashtags and make Instagram posts about his music because that's how it is when you're famous but most people aren't famous my uncle died a couple weeks ago he was my father's oldest brother and I hadn't seen his uncle in years even though I remember him well from my young our younger years when our family get-togethers were a normal occurrence my uncle my dad told me had moved to Maryland and it was there that he had passed away from what was apparently a heart attack my father had handled most of the arrangements for his older brother's passing and his funeral and stuff like that he made all the phone calls he went and got all the paperwork done and signed and notarized to get his his brother's body released from the coroner he drove to maryland from my hometown philadelphia gathered up all my uncle's things where my uncle had been living and my uncle's wife or girlfriend and kids they were either hard to locate or unavailable to do any of that stuff so my uncle's brother my father he's the one who handled all the arrangements from what i could gather if it hadn't been for my father, my uncle would have passed away and just been quietly forgotten. There was no other family member who was going to you know, take the reins and handle making sure he got buried properly or that his stuff got gathered or to even let the rest of the family know that anything had even happened to him. Most people, they don't die the way Notorious B.I.G. died. They die like my uncle died. Quietly, no fanfare, and sometimes there's not a single person out there who has the mind or the means to ensure that the deceased's belongings are gathered or that he or she receives a proper burial at all. A lot of people die completely in vain and nobody gives a fuck. Whatever that now dead person accomplished, whomever they knew, the people they touched, all of that gets buried right along with them, without remembrance, with no one keeping their name alive. Even those who do have family and friends around them when they pass, affording the deceased to be remembered, mourned, and celebrated in death, eventually, those people also lose their race against time. The people who celebrated your life when you die, they're eventually going to move on, and at some point, they got to keep living their lives, and at some point, they're going to die too. Someone once philosophized that on the day of your funeral, your friends and family will all look at each other and they'll ask themselves, where are we going for lunch? The earth just keeps rotating. The people who fought the hardest to keep your memory alive, one day they'll be dead. And with them, so are your memories. Who's going to talk about you when all your advocates are also buried right next to you? These are the realities of life and death, and they happen to everyone. Notorious B.I.G.'s presence still reigns some 20 plus years later. We'll see who's still mentioning his date, March 9th, in let's say 2045. We don't know. Anyone less famous than Notorious B.I.G.? Your after-death legacy may have an even shorter shelf life than Biggs did, which leaves you with just two options. Option A, give up. I mean, what's the use of all this hard work, working on your game, striving to reach goals, and pushing yourself as hard as you do if there's a high probability that 100 years from now, nobody's going to remember a damn thing about it or you? I mean, why even try? 
That's a legitimate question. You can answer it by spending your whole life drifting, trying very little, and aiming for very little as well, since it all eventually turns into nothing anyway. You can take this option. I'm not trying to convince you not to. This is your choice. Here's option B, though. Knowing life to be short, make the most of it. We're in the year 2020 right now. Even if you live to be 100 years old, one human lifespan is nothing compared to all of eternity, if you really think about it. Knowing your time to be limited, then, you can choose to give up, citing the uselessness of all of it, to, or you can go in the opposite direction and decide to have a sense of urgency about the relatively short time you're afforded to make an impact. If you choose option B, I have one request. Stop waiting to live your life. My uncle was close to 70 years old when he died, but I bet he has some plans for his future that he didn't get to complete. Notorious B.I.G.'s associates all say that B.I.G. being only 24 years old, he had plans. And I'm sure you had plans too. Stuff that you'll do when or as soon as or one day until sometime, until there isn't a one day. Look, some things in life take time. If you're 13, you can't make it to the NBA tomorrow. If you just got hired for a job, you won't be CEO next week. Patience is a virtue. But... There are a lot of things, I'm sure, that don't take any more time than you've been giving them just out of plain procrastination. Procrastination that's betting on the fact that you had time to get to it. If I don't do it today, I can still do it tomorrow. That's the mindset that a lot of people have when they procrastinate. I'm sure Notorious B.I.G., I'm sure he thought the same thing. I'm sure my uncle was thinking the same thing as well. One day, all of this, every website, every brand, every company CEO, every news story, and anything else that's happening today, it will all be long forgotten, buried under the beginnings of a whole new civilization that will think about us as much as we think about the people who lived 150 years before us. We don't think about them hardly at all. Your very existence will be reduced to a one paragraph obituary, if that. Maybe somebody will be around to pick up your stuff and identify your dead body, maybe not. What do you want to do, or what do you want, rather, that obituary to say about you? And who's going to bother to read it, and why? If you like what you read in this article right here, I suggest you go to dreallday.com slash blog. You can read all my stuff and get my book, The Mirror of Motivation, The Self-Guide, The Self-Discipline. You can get that book free by going to mirrormotivation.com. The link is down there in the video description. Work on your game. Dre all day.